Hey, what's up guys? It's Brian here, Brian's Law Maintenance. All right, we got a special video for you guys. I just said this on the last video, did I not? But hey, we're hanging out here again with Corey Ballard. What's up, brother? What's up, man? How, How are, are you? We're doing good, man. So we're actually doing a tour of right up here. We got Perfect Cut. This is Corey Ballard's uh, lawn and landscape company over here in Des Moines, Iowa. Yeah, a lot of you guys saw the Troy Clog video that we did about two months ago, and you guys want to know, some of you guys want to build a big business. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I don't. Uh, I run an owner-operated lawn and landscape company, but this guy right here with his business partner, Matt, have built one of the most successful lawn and landscape companies in all of North America. So for real, if you guys want to go on a really cool tour with us, come hang out with us over the next few minutes. Let's do it right here. We'll check it out. Take it away, brother. Okay, so we are at our uh, maintenance facility. We've got an admin building across the street, and then we've got our construction facility down the street. We also have an operation in Omaha, Nebraska, and Cedar Rapids. So I'm just gonna show you around. Uh, this is our maintenance building, where our maintenance operation and maintenance admin work, and we'll go across the street here shortly. All right. uh, it is a Saturday, so nobody's here, so we actually have more people than this, typically. Right, right. right. Minus the COVID. Um, so we try to have a nice, facility when you walk in and uh, get you know get a good first impression if you're going to do an interview yep you really want something that's inviting and clean we just updated this but uh just a quick tour in here we'll go out and show you guys the fun stuff which is like shop and trucks and cool stuff you like to see i love it brother um so we have some uh you know support system in here for operation a uh, guy that runs our operations offices in here again nobody's here because we've got a uh, saturday more operations people work in here uh, a lot of computers are gone right now because we have people working from home with COVID. So a lot of people have taken their uh, machines home and they're working from home, which is unique for this time. Uh, small conference room here when we need to have meetings and private meetings to, uh, to get together with small groups of people. All right. We tried to set this up so there's not a lot of walk-in traffic in here to keep this clean. So everything is key coded. Um, What's up guys, how are you? Greatest video ever. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> greatest, video ever. Greatest, greatest boss ever too, right? <laughs> this is how you guys know it's completely unscripted, right? Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> there you go. We're trying to set this up again. This doesn't, uh, we don't do this in a way to keep testing the people out, but everyone that needs to get in there has a code. Because what happened before was our old design is everybody would come in in the morning to get their daily routes and track dirt and mud in. So it, it kind of felt like we were saying, hey, you can't come in. Yep. Um, but we had to do that to try to keep a clean Just workplace and, and partition it. So over yeah. here, We've got men's and women's bathrooms. Um, again, if you need to get in and see somebody, if you got a code or a deal, you can get in and talk to people. Nice. Um, right over here, we have our kind of our employee stuff, clock in, coronavirus stuff, um, how to get a hold of everybody on your team. Cool. You're good, buddy. You can come in. All right. You getting some work done today? Yes, sir. There awesome, you go. Man. Nice, nice. Uh, we tried to set this up out here where we guys got some small offices here. This typically in the morning would be a break area for guys to get together. Um, we would typically have on the screen kind of stuff that's going on that day, safety messages, employee messages, anything going on on our TV screens. We also tried to set up some nice vending machines so the guys can get what they need. We really don't want the guys leaving the shop and going to Casey's or a gas station. So we really want to give them fridge, ice machine, vending machine, um, we got lockers over here as well. Some guys that need, uh, we use a laundry service for certain people. Oh, that's They sweet. come in each day, their uniform's clean, ready to go. At the end of the day, they drop that off in the laundry right there. Gotcha. Um, guys said, well, I want Red Bull. We get, we get a Red Bull machine. You want Monster? We get Monster. Uh, so we try to keep this super clean, give the guys an area to work uh, and feel good in the morning, meet, talk, see about what's going on, hand out route sheets. Obviously with COVID, right now we're staggering crews, staggering start times. We're not having big team meetings. Yep. That's changed a little bit. Shop, guys, I'll turn some lights on for you so you can see what's going on out here. Uh, so this is our shop out here. Uh, a couple cool things that I've showed you guys in some other videos. Shop managers up there. Uh, we try to keep this really clean. We've got a parts room over there. Um, it's not perfectly clean, but one of the cool things that we do, guys, is um, I show people this just because I think it's a really cool. It took us a long time to get there, but. Every single day when our mechanics come in, we've got four mechanics, they can come in, they can see exactly what's broken, who requested it, the department, what needs to be done, the unit number, description of the problem, where it's located, and we really work on a system that allows, so our mechanics don't just come in in the morning and just 
try to figure out what needs to be fixed. Sure. They check it off. The appropriate manager will know that the piece of machinery is clean, done, fixed. Where can I find it? Does it need to go on to another job site? So great system there that's worked really well for us. Wow. I don't know what happened here with the soil slick. We won't get into <laughs> that right now. Hey, so quick story. All right, you gotta give everybody like a little bit of like time frame and context, right? So everybody sees Ballard products, right? We just yep. did that video. It probably came out uh, not too uh, long ago uh, before this video. Uh, but everybody's thinking like, hey, you're just selling accessories or selling products. Like, you don't cut grass. You, you've never ran the business. Like, no, you know what I mean? Sure. You've heard the same stories. And I'm curious if you guys have ever thought the same thing because I know a lot of you guys always joke with me like I'm an actor and just have fun. But like, no, dude, I really run a lawn and landscape company. I make YouTube videos just nights and weekends and just kind of entertain you guys and have some fun and just try to help you guys out a little bit. Well, that's the same thing Corey does with Ballard Products, but you run a real massive lawn and landscape company. So... 20 years of business? Uh, 30 years. So I started this company with a lawnmower and a moped, and uh, I don't run the day-to-day -to -day today. I got a great business partner, Matt, who runs the day-to-day. -day. Yep. But, uh, you know, we started this, or I started this with a lawnmower and a moped. I went door-to-door, -door, started asking people, can I cut their grass? So I've been through, I've had one crew, I've had two crews, I've had three crews, and, and today we've got just shy of 200 employees with... Um, three facilities in Des Moines and two in other locations. So wow. we've certainly grown it over the years, and I, I say this all the time, it's, it's not for everybody. Uh, it certainly has a lot of challenges. So um, I can show you kind of what we got going on here. This, guys, that's not, that's not good. Oh. <laughs> when you see a truck like that, that's not good. Uh, but we do have the ability uh, to do a lot of in-house repair. We certainly outsource things that are up and beyond our capacity. Sure. Uh, we have a mobile service truck that's much dirtier than I'd like, but this thing can go out on site. Um, it's got a welder on it, compressor on it, winch, so we're able to fix stuff on job sites as well. Uh, keep our guys running safe out there. Vacuum over there. Jeez. Um, so we've got some area out here, so there's some mowers sitting here. We'll, we'll probably have a bunch of mowers loaded up on trucks out back, which we'll show you. But uh, So we've got kind of what we call, uh, I call it cold storage, but it is heated out here. Okay. So it's not quite as fancy as our shop, but uh, Got our sweeper, we keep our parking lot swept, forklift to keep things unloaded and loaded. So where did you get the blue and uh, lime green? First truck I ever bought was blue. I just wanted something different. It was either blue or yellow, and I didn't want to drive a yellow truck. So um, we went with blue from day one. Sure. Um, it's challenging, you know, when you have to buy a brand new truck and paint it blue. I was That's, just going to say. <laughs> it's expensive, but it's our brand. We've spent a lot of time and a lot of money on branding our company and being different. Yep. Um, you can see, like, this is an older truck. So this has got the old logo. We haven't changed every single vehicle. Okay. Um, but everything else should have the blue and lime on it. And both of these trucks are set up for applicators. Um, in here is where most of our chemicals run out of, so we've got a lot of dry storage. In here we've got uh, some trucks set up. Next door there'd be a couple trucks parked in the wash bays as well. We keep anything with chemicals, we keep it locked up. Yep. Just because you've got chemicals on board, we just don't want anyone tampering with our tanks or sure. our equipment. And then every landscape crew has a cage. Uh, they're supposed to be locked. They're not. See, guys, we're not perfect either. <laughs> perfect. <guy. laughs> um, you know, they're supposed to be locked up, and each person has their own cage so they can keep control of their tools. Sure. Um, and try not to have a, just tools flying everywhere and people looking for different stuff. Yep. We'll walk out back. We'll show you some trucks. So we also have on-site fuel right back here. So we, we really don't want any of our... I just told you I didn't have any case. There's some case wheel loaders. Is that right? I lied to you. There you go. <laughs> uh, there's another case right there. So we have some wheel loaders we use for snow removal. Um, I like this. It's, uh, I can get used to this, having fuel on-site. Yeah, so we have our gas. That's a time saver. Off-road, off-road mix. And then we have our diesel. Um, we also own the 25 acres behind us here, so we're going to eventually expand out the back here shortly. We've got we own all that ground that runs as far down as you can see. Wow. So most of our mowing trucks are the Isuzu NPRs um, set up just like this. We don't have to pull trailers. There's a good setup right there with the, a, a crew cab there. So there you go. Um, everybody's set up with the, usually the same size uh, truck and trailer, a couple two, three mowers on each one of them. So what made you go with the uh, Isuzu's over like box trucks or uh, truck uh, and trailers? We have some box trucks. We just, uh, they're easy to keep the cabs painted. It's a small cab, so if you've got to repaint the cabs every three to five years, you can keep them looking good. Sure. The design really hasn't changed. The turn radius is great. Yep. Uh, we're able to keep all the stuff on there. The guys aren't pulling trailers, so they're much easier to drive. 
if they've got to park them on job sites that are tight, fast food places, gas stations. We just found they're under CDL, so guys don't need CDLs to operate them in Iowa anyways. Yeah, here's some plows sitting, uh, so we're starting to bring some snow plows back. Uh, they're not all here, most of them, a lot of them are down the street, but you can see we still run some snow plows um, on some trucks. Primarily we use bigger equipment, pushers, wheel loaders, skid loaders, but we still have, uh, obviously you have a need for truck with plows, so here's some plows sitting that we must have just got back here and, sure. and got them somewhat lined up. but. Uh, yeah, so that's what we've got back here. We do have some stuff out in that field back there, like I said, so we've got some room for expansion. Um, wheel loaders we use primarily for snow, but we also load some stuff in the yard as well. So yeah, that's what it looks like for us. We really like this setup here. Uh, most of our landscape trucks, if we went down to that facility, you'll see a lot of Isuzu NPRs with the 19.5 uh, GVW dump bodies on them. These are all 14.5 GVWs for the mowing crews. You'll see that everything we sell, guys, all the trucks have the same racks that, that we sell. Um, everything we sell, we use. So where are we at now, Corey? Yeah, so this is our admin building. Um, I'm gonna walk you through here. The lights are off, it's a Saturday. Again, not very many people are working. Um, nobody's working today, but because of COVID, we have a lot of people working from home. So when we get upstairs, I'll show you that uh, there's a lot of uh, computers gone and people are able to set up at home. And uh, so- Well, uh, this, was, this, by the way, this was really important to you because you said that doesn't work without this. Absolutely, you know, I don't think people realize the amount of, um, at our level, the amount of admin and support it takes to uh, keep this together. So over sure. here we've got uh, Cassie, who's our COO. Wes runs our HR department. Uh, my business partner, Matt Bowman's in this. Um, he's been with me forever. Matt runs the day-to-day -day operations uh, at Perfect Cut because I focus my time on Ballard now. I stepped away about a year ago to focus all my attention on that. And, cool. Uh, so Matt runs the day-to-day -day grind over here, which is uh, never a dull day. So upstairs here we have, um, we try to do a really open work you know, workflow here. Uh, so all these are typically full of people. Um, we've got a small conference room here. Our CFO sits here. Again, as you can see, people's desks are kind of bare because they've taken a lot of their machines home. Sure. Um, we've got a gallon here that does our billing. We'll get more lights on as we walk this way. So again, we wanted to have a really open workflow through here contract administrator. Yeah, so typically on a normal work day when there's no uh, pandemic, this is full of people. Again, working on uh, everything from billing, collecting, contract administration, um, you name it. It takes a lot of people to keep this thing running the way it needs to run. Mm -hmm. Try to create a workspace over here where people can uh, get lunch, have small meetings, little kitchenette area, meeting area. We usually keep positive stuff on the TV uh, to keep everybody kind of in tune. Um, when we need to, large conference room in here. We can uh, put stuff up on the TVs here and uh, we can get 18 to 20 people in this conference room and, and get everybody together when we need to. Sure. Again, down here we have, um, this is where our account management and sales team sit. Uh, business development managers in there. And then each person has a workstation in here. And again, we, we used to have offices and we really went away from that. We wanted to have an open workspace where people could communicate better collaborate ideas, if they've got a concern. They, I, th I just felt like uh, you can just talk so much more. You overhear somebody having a question or concern with something, you can pitch in, add some advice. And yeah. We'll go around back, I'll show you just a few more things and then you guys have probably seen what you need to see over here. It's nothing too crazy, but uh, right. irrigation techs work out of here. So each irrigation tech uh, has a kind of a workstation that they, they work out of in here. So the irrigation service department works here. Construction again is down the road where we install irrigation. Part of uh, commercial decorating, interior landscapes. That runs out of this bay right here. Yeah, and here, so we just got ice, a lot of extra ice melt because we had a light winter, so we've got a lot of extra ice melt here. We have our salt, bulk salt storage somewhere else. So we've got some sidewalk machines here. We've got some outside, and then we've probably got quite a few that are gonna come in to get service or maybe are still on job sites. We actually had snow last week, so. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, this is kind of full in here as well. Man, you guys got a, uh, your hands full when it comes to snow equipment, brother. 
This is awesome. All right, dude, so super appreciate the tour, the whole deal. Uh, we just came from this building over here, and then we're back over at the main headquarters, right? And I was asking you how, okay, so you're in three different cities, you got 200 people, I mean like, there's such a story here. Any final thoughts or parting words for anybody who wants to grow a, a big company? Uh, anything that you want to leave people the, the Corey Ballard 20 years ago or what, or 30 years ago? Yeah, you know, I just think everybody has to figure out what their size is, you know, what size are they comfortable with, you know, what makes them happy. Uh, bigger's not always better, guys. It is a grind. It's a grind every day. Um, so I think it's just important to figure out what's your business model. What do you want to be? Uh, what kind of message do you want to put out there? Um, you know, we all know that employees are tough to get, clients are tough to get. Uh, so I think it's just important to figure out what works for you and works for your family and your work-life balance. And, sure. Uh, you know, I, it's not for everybody. Um, if I were to do this over t again today, we talk about that. My business partner and I talk about that. You know, I don't know if we'd do it the same. Right. Uh, you know, the economy was good. We were able to grow. We never said no. We took a lot of chances. And, uh, um, you know, we're excited and we're, we're happy. We're proud of what we built today. But uh, it, it doesn't come without a ton of work. You know, I talk to guys all the time that say, if I was that big, I wouldn't even be there. And, and guys, that's just, uh, in my experience, that's just not the case, man. It takes... Uh, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of monsters and red bulls <laughs> to keep functioning, and uh, so we enjoy it, and uh, we're proud of what we've done. And you know, most importantly, I love taking care of our people. I love having employees come to us and say, "Man, I bought my first house, or bought a new car, or maybe, maybe I just had you know a ton of Christmas gifts underneath the Christmas tree this year." And yeah. to me, that that's where it's at. That's that's the that's the fun part. I love it, dude. That's awesome. Well, hey, I got to say a big thank you to uh, you for opening up your facility. Um, you know, you guys saw the Troy Clog video. A lot of great uh, uh, conversations. You guys are appreciated that. Uh, Corey knows Troy. They're buds. I mean, the, at, at that level, they all know each other. And uh, thank you for opening up your facility. Yeah, awesome, uh, man. I, I don't take it for granted. I know you're going 100 miles an hour just like I am, but um, thanks again, for real. It means a lot. Yeah, I cool. appreciate you coming out, man. It's been fun. All right, guys. Well, if you enjoyed the video, you guys already know, shoot a big thumbs up. Do it for Corey. Don't do it for me. Uh, if you guys appreciate his time and everything that he just showed you guys,